Good afternoon, fifth period. You guys are super awesome. Already set up and ready to go for notes, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the record button. Not the play button. That would be weird. I'm not recording. I'm not on play. Um, today's lecture notes, you will need a compass. So grab a toolbox if you don't have one. And a protractor. You will need a ruler, so make sure that your protractor either has a ruler on it or that you grab a toolbox that has a ruler in it because you will need a ruler to measure things. All right. Today's lecture is called Classifying Triangles. Use one of the hand sharpeners. And the objective, your quick summary for today is, I will classify triangles by sides and angles. So I'm going to go over the vocab super fast, and then we'll get to applying them and talking about the different ways that this can look. So let's start off with side classification. Plural, because there's more than one of them. All right, the first side, oh, the first side classification is the scalene triangle. And in order for a triangle to be allowed into the scalene triangle club, this triangle, whoops, too far. There we go. This triangle, in order to be allowed into the club, needs to have no sides congruent all right the other triangle club is the isosceles triangle club in order to be allowed to play in the isosceles triangle club a triangle must have scaling In order to be part of the isosceles triangle club, triangle has to have at least two sides congruent. And in order to be a part of the elite equilateral triangle club, a triangle must have all sides congruent. like you guys to take a highlighter and highlight the title mine smudged a little bit and then underline the names of the clubs these vocabulary words All right, so these are the three different types of triangles that we could have by their side lengths. The scaling, those sides aren't congruent. The isosceles, we got at least two of them that are congruent. And then the equilateral, where all of them are congruent. So grab your protractor or ruler at this time, and we're going to draw a random triangle here. And then we're going to measure the sides. And sides. We're going to measure the sides and try to figure out which one we came up with, okay? So I'm going to put a side here. I'm going to put a side here. And I'm going to put a side here. Okay? You can use a protractor or a ruler or the side of your phone or the side of the calculator, a ruler. All right, let's go figure out what kind of triangle I just drew. You will need your rulers. Okay. So measure the side. So I'm going to measure this one. This one looks like it's 1.9 centimeters. Okay. I'm going to measure the side. Oh my goodness. This one also looks like it's 1.9. Whoop. 
All right, let's do the last side. Let's see what we end up with. 2.3. All right. So what kind of triangle did I end up drawing? An isosceles. an isosceles. I was actually trying to do an equilateral. Oh, well. All right. What kind of triangles did you all come up with? Scaling. I did mine all one inch. Yeah, equilateral. Y'all one inch equilateral? But you measured yours, right? Cheating. You got an equilateral? You, you measured yours out? No, it just happened that way? You're a liar. I, be I believe it. The, the, the way that he's doing the head shaky thing. Like, no, no, oh. I totally didn't measure. He's a liar. I, I believe it. I saw him measure it. You saw him measure it. I saw him measure it. All right. Well, let's let's give our full sentence. Um, this oops triangle getting distracted is an isosceles. When you write your sentence, please make sure that you write the kind of triangle that you drew, not the kind of triangle that I drew. So mine is an isosceles triangle because. <coughs> two sides are congruent. If you do one of the scalene, you'll want to write that no sides are congruent. If you do an equilateral, you'll want to write that all sides are congruent. And congratulations to those of you who did it. <laughs> it's, it's okay. You know what? You know what? We'll just, you did good. You did good. GG, girl. You did good. All right. Put a, a bar there, a little topic changer bar. Send it all the way across, even into your margin. The example is slightly different, but same concept. All right. Let's do angle classifications. All right, we have four of them, so we're going to go real fast through all four of these. Here we go. The first angle classification club is the acute angle, excuse me, acute triangles club. And in order for a triangle to be allowed in the acute triangles club, all the angles must be acute angles. Oh, he's so cute. Get it? Acute. Oh, you're, so, you're so cute. <laughs> you're so cute. The joke wasn't, but you are. The next. <laughs> you just realized. Okay, okay, after. After, okay. The next triangle club is the right triangles club. And in order to be in the right triangles club, a triangle must have exactly one right angle. It can't have more than one. And I hope you guys are going, well, you can't have more than one right angle in a triangle. That makes no sense. You can't? Yeah, you can't. You can't? You can't? You can't have more than It's going to end up being a square. It's going to end up being a square or something. Yeah, it's going to be like a yee. It's going to be like a yee. Oh, oh, is my next section going to be so fun with you guys? Because I'm going to prove all of you wrong. You can, you can. It's going to be fun. No, you're, you're going to have fun. You're going to have fun. And we'll we'll get to we'll get to pretend that we're in summer and we'll all be Olaf. <laughs> Thank you, Heartbeats. No more. Thank you. All right. I'm glad you caught that joke. The next one is the obtuse triangles club. In order to be a member of the obtuse triangles club, a triangle must have exactly one obtuse 
angle. Again, you may not have more than one. You may not have less than one. You may only have exactly one. And the last and very elitist triangle club is the Equal Angular Triangles Club. And in order to be a member of the Equal <coughs> Angular Triangle Club, a triangle must have all angles congruent. At this time, using your straight edge, I want you to pick one of the three, four types of triangles classifications by angles and I want you to freehand using the straight edge to help you out to make them straight a triangle that you think is that one that you want it to be and then we're gonna measure the angles and see how well you did um, I you know what? I'm gonna try for an equal angular again I'm gonna try for that equal angular you're going for a right okay not a left Okay. And not a wrong one either. Okay. Looks pretty good. Well, of course it's a perfect triangle. It's got three sides and I used a straight edge. Snap. But now the question is, <laughs> is it equiangular? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's measure it. And I'm going to use the help of a little sheet of paper that I happen to have floating around on my desk to help me out. So I'm going to line up my vertex viewer and one of my sides. And then I'm going to take my paper and this angle is 58 degrees. <coughs> Holy cow, now that I'm deaf. I'm going to check this other angle. Y'all measure your angles. This would be not to be 89. Okay, then that one's not a right angle. An obtuse? Is it more than 90 or less than 90? It's less than 90. It's less than 90. So is it obtuse? It's acute. This one is 62. All right, I have one more angle to measure. So do you put this as an acute angle because? Yep, and this one's 60. I have 89. I was really close. See, the angles are, the angles are really close. But it's still not an equiangular because they're not exactly perfect. So at best, mine is an acute. What did you end up with? A right. A right, nicely done. I wanted that. You wanted that, but you ended up with an acute. What did you get? You haven't measured yet. Okay, you need a projector. There you go. You can borrow mine. Wow. What'd you get, dude? Okay, so you're waiting on a projector. All right. Oh, there's an extra one. I'm glad you didn't throw it like a ninja star. <laughs> That's where my brain went. All Batman style. Okay, write your sentence. This triangle is... Mine is an acute. Triangle. Because all angles are acute. Fantastic. If you're done, take this moment to highlight your section title. Underline your club name so that they stand out a little bit and are easy to see. Because you know what's coming up in your workbooks, don't you? Triangles. Yeah, and having to classify them, right? So it's going to be a really good idea for you to have the name somewhere where it's easy for you to identify. So if the direction says classify them by angles, you know exactly where to look and you know exactly what your choices are. All right, as soon as you're done with this one, go all the way across. 
one edge to the other. Okay. I'm going to zoom out a bit so that you can see my whole paper for a second. Okay. And what I want you guys to do is that we're going to fold our paper a little bit, okay? This right edge of my note-taking surface, for some of you, it's the actual edge of your paper. For those using the, the video notebook paper, it's this line. I'd like you guys to line it up and fold it. Line it up with what we use as our left-hand margin. So it's either the, the red line that you use or the, the new red line that you draw, whichever one. <coughs> okay, line it up. Put a crease just on that part of the paper that we haven't written on yet. Just that little bottom piece. Okay, doesn't have to be a super hard crease. You just want to be able to feel and see that little bit of a fold. And if you notice, it's not right directly halfway of my paper. It's actually got some margin hanging out because you're cutting this portion in half. Okay. You're bisecting where you're writing your notes. You're not bisecting including the margin. Okay. All right. All right. This part's going to feel like a movie. Are you ready? This movie is titled Construction of an equilateral triangle. There it is. And since it's a movie, it's got to have stars. With George Clooney playing the part of Street Edge. Can we have Al Pacino? And Al Pacino as The Compass. <laughs> you totally think I wasn't going to because I didn't even react, right? <laughs> Trace over the fold that you put. So now your section has a title, and then under the title, you've got your, your division. We're going to use the left hand side to write the steps of the construction. Clearly, not a very long step because it's a very small space. And we're going to use the right to actually draw the construction. Again, not a big construction because you don't have a lot of space. You will need your compass and a straight edge. Mine ran, oh, here it is. And a straight edge. I'm going to use my protractor. Okay, so step number one. Draw a segment. A segment, a line segment. A piece of a line that has two endpoints. It doesn't continue on forever in any direction. And it doesn't matter whether you draw it horizontally or vertically or at some sort of angle. You make it just however you want. I'm going to recommend, though, that you don't make it really big. But don't make it teeny tiny either. Make it somewhere kind of halfway. I'm going to make mine like, I don't know, an inch or two. There. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to put mine kind of sitting slanted just because, I don't know, it seems... That seems cool to me. Seems like the right thing to do. It feels it feels like the right thing to do. And it's artistic at this point, you know, it's not it feels like the right thing to do. Alright, step two. This is the longest step that you have. Draw two circles. Each centered on an endpoint with radius congruent to the segment. <coughs> Draw two circles, each centered on an endpoint with radius congruent to the segment. All right. All right. Okay, I'm going to move my document cam up because if you can see, like if I try to put my compass down, I'm going to run into the document camera. Like it's just too low. So I'm going to lift it up. I'll zoom it back down so that you can see the directions in a bit. All right, so place my, my needle 
of my compass on one end point, my pencil on the end point of, on the other end point, and now I'm going to draw two circles. Okay, I notice already my circle's crashing into my writing. That's okay. Maybe just make it a little lighter in that area so that way you can still read what you wrote. And it went a little bit outside my note-taking area. That's okay. There we go. There's one circle. I'm going to spin it around. Put my needle on my other end point. My pencil on the other end point. And I'm going to draw my other circle. Now this circle clearly is going to start crashing into a bunch of my writing and since I don't want to cover up my writing with the circle, I'm, I'm not going to draw a complete circle. What I'm really interested in is at least one of these intersection points. This one appears totally in my words, but this one down here isn't. So that's the one I'm really interested in and so this is the one I'm going to make sure is really clear and easy to see. Which is not at all as easy as I pretend to make it want to look like it is. So I, I understand if you guys are frustrated because there we go. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in now so that we can see this a bit better. There we go. So if you guys ended up with enough space where you can see both intersections, awesome. You get to pick the intersection you like the best. Um, since one of my intersections got eaten up by the title of the movie, I'm forced into picking this intersection point. But select an intersection point, whichever one is most convenient for you, and then connect it to the endpoints of your segments. Yes. Oh, I suppose that should be step three, right? Connect the dots. Connect the points. Ta-da! The title said we should have constructed an equilateral triangle. Remember for gentlemen, gentlemen. Later. <coughs> In order for it to be an equilateral triangle, all the sides need to be congruent. So I'm going to take my compass. There's the length of that side. Now notice I'm not measuring like with a ruler and units or anything. I'm just taking my compass. And if I did this right, all those other two sides are totally going to be the same length without me having to adjust my compass. Bam! One more. Bam! It looks like a magic trick, but it totally isn't. Especially when I bring my compass up, it's like, look, it's too big and super wide, and there's no way, and then... <laughs> I'm not moving yeah. around. I know, that was really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> it does look bigger because when you push it forward, like when you bring it up to the camera. It's close. <laughs> In art, that would be called perspective. Okay. This is, compass keeps moving. It keeps moving. I'm sorry, do you want to borrow mine? No. Okay. So all these sides are congruent. I'm going to mark it with my little line. So what club does this triangle belong to? The equilateral triangle club. Awesome. <coughs> so equilateral triangle. What other side club, side classification club does this triangle belong to? Hold. We're looking at the sides. Yeah, look at the sides first. That's that's an angular. That's an angle one. Hang on to that one. We might come back to it. Look at the side classifications. We got equilateral. Could this thing be a scalene? Yeah, no way. Because we got sides congruent. Could this be a isosceles? You're saying yes, you're saying no. It can be. It can be because it has at least two sides congruent. Why can't it be isosceles? Uh, okay. Because it has more than two. Okay. The, the definition of isosceles says at, at least, least two. So I don't care if there's more. It just can't be less. Does that make sense on the at least? 
wording? Okay. So yeah, let's let's put this as part of the isosceles triangle club. There we go. Now let's look at the angles. Y'all had said that some of these angles were that it was a, an acute triangle because all of those angles look acute. They're kind of small. Yeah, I'll go with that. Now, visually, we can do it. We'll take your protractor and measure it just to be certain if you're not sure. But we'll go ahead and, and go with it for now. So we'll call this one also a member of the acute triangle club. And then a couple of you had said maybe it was equiangular. So the only way to know for sure is take out your protractor and measure it. So let's do it. Now the first time I did this construction, I got some like really bizarre numbers. They were they were really weird. What are we yeah, we're measuring. Now you want to make sure that when you're lining up your vertex and your vertex finder and you're lining up your your base ray to measure your angle, that you try to make sure that you're as accurate as possible. You've got to kind of imagine that this triangle is like the foot of a bridge or the bottom part of a building. And if you make this alignment a little bit off and you make your measurements a little bit off, when the construction crew goes to build the thing, they're going to build it a little bit off and then people are going to walk on it and it's going to fall down and everyone's going to die. So. <sighs> Please don't kill people. Please do your very best to make sure these measurements are as, as accurate as possible by lining things up as precisely as you can. Oh, snap. 61 degrees. I need to zoom out a little bit. There we go. Gentlemen, measure your angles. 61 degrees is what mine came out at us. What did y'all's come out as? What'd you get? You haven't finished measuring. Okay. Come on, finish measuring. This one's right at 60. Okay, so mine didn't end up being equiangular. Already. I can tell right off the bat. Because I had two that weren't congruent. But here's the thing. Oh, I totally misspelled this. It's supposed to be equiangular. It's supposed to be an equiangular triangle. I am just, I wasn't accurate and I drew it wrong. Oh well. What about you? Did you all draw them wrong or did you do it okay? Are all your angles 60 when you measured them? Measure. Did you draw two circles? Did you draw your two circles? Yes. Yep. The compass. The compass. Sure. Here you go. So, did anyone get theirs to, to actually show up as a legitimate equal angular? Yes. yes. 60, 60, 60. Nicely done. You haven't measured them yet? Oh, so you got like this? Yeah? Okay. Okay, yeah. And you know what? I, yeah. Out of all the ones I've done so far, I've only had one that came out like legit and perfect. So, you know, it's especially for your first one. And that one wasn't my first one. It was like my fourth one. Um, yeah, but as long as they're close, we're good. Did you get yours right? Nice. Awesome. Well, that's all I have to say on triangle classification for the moment. We'll see you again tomorrow.